Church, today we're looking at Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 23, three verses that are packed full of content. Jesus is having this conversation with his disciples, and he's telling them, I'm going to have to go to Jerusalem, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to be killed, and on the third day, I will be raised again to life. Now, can you imagine the disciples, they're trying to process all of this, and it's probably not making a whole lot of sense to them, probably a little fearful, not understanding, they don't want to see Jesus hurt or killed, obviously. And Peter steps up, and if we back up just a little bit, we know that Peter has been elevated. Uh, Jesus says, you're the rock on which I'm going to build my church. You know that I'm the Messiah because God has revealed it to you. And so Peter's in this pretty good frame of mind, I would imagine. He feels confident enough that he can approach Jesus, pulls him aside, and the Bible says that he began to rebuke him. He's rebuking him continually in this moment. And he says this, Oh no, Lord, this will never happen to you. Now, let's look at that right there. He says, Oh no, Lord. Now, when we call someone Lord or Lordship, we think about we're submitting to that person. So if I'm going to call Jesus Lord in this moment, then I'm going to just say, enough of the way I feel, God. I, I'm putting that aside. I am totally want to hear and trust exactly what you say. Well, it's quite contradictory here that he's calling him Lord, except at the same time he's saying, no, there's no way what you're saying is going to happen, Jesus. There's no way this will ever happen to you. Before we could get much further, Jesus stops him right there. And he turns and he rebukes him and he says, get thee behind me, Satan. Wow. What a turn of event here. You've gone from Peter, you're the one in which I'm going to build my church. Peter is now probably out of place of love and uh, just fearful for Jesus and what that means for him to say, no, there's no way I can go. Uh, that could happen. And now all of a sudden Jesus is saying, get behind me, Satan. Why is he saying this? Well, we know from scripture that in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is facing death. And he's talking to God. He says, if there's any way possible, let this cup pass from me. But if it had to be done, he would go through. We know that Jesus went through. And he died a death on the cross for us so that we can have salvation. But Jesus, in human form, knew there would be agony, there would be suffering and pain that came with a death on the cross. And so in this very moment, Satan is using Peter, in a sense, to tempt Jesus to not go through with the cross. Satan knew everything that would come from the cross, the power that would come from the cross, that salvation would come as a result of the cross, and he wanted anything but for Jesus to go through with the cross. And so Peter becomes the mouthpiece of Satan in this moment. He had no clue. He thinks he's doing right. He thinks he's doing good. But Satan is using him to tempt Jesus to forego the cross. Now, what does it say to us today? Well, I think it says that we need to trust Jesus no matter what. Lots of times things don't make sense in our lives. Sometimes Jesus has called us to do something. It doesn't make sense. And we come up with all these reasons, even, even good reasons, quote unquote, good reasons that doesn't make sense. When all in all, God's just saying, trust me, trust my will. Uh, the Bible tells us his ways are higher and greater than our ways. We need to submit ourselves to him. One commentator says this, because Peter was reasoning from his own uh, finite and sinful mind, he found himself siding with Satan and opposing God. When he trusted in his own perspective, he could no longer see God's. I don't know about you today, but I don't want to get to the point where I can't see God's perspective. And literally what that means for me and to you today is to submit to his lordship. When we call him Lord, we better mean it. We better say, God, I'm trusting you wholeheartedly. I'm submitting completely to you. Whatever it is you have for my life, be Lord and I want to follow you.